Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Are you looking for a way to add dimension and variety to your jewelry? Well, I've got a great solution for you. It's called direct casting. We're going to use a variety of natural materials to create some really interesting shapes and forms. You can see laid out on the pad before me some examples of what we're going to actually create today. I'm using dry materials such as beans or peas and dry pasta as well as water. And you can see I've produced a really interesting set of items that I can cannibalize and turn into some interesting pieces of jewelry. Let me clear this away and I'll show you how to get started. Let me show you the tools that you're going to need for this project. First, you're going to need a surface that you can heat the crucible on. Now, this should be a surface that will deflect heat and not transfer it into your tabletop. And be sure not to work on a good table. Next, you're going to need something that you can pick up and put on top of the can to smother the flame. This will starve the flame of any oxygen and you'll be able to deal with this can a lot quicker. Next, you're going to need cans. These could be cans that you got from coffee or beans or what have you. And you want to fill them with dry material. So in one can I have dry chickpeas and in the other I have dry pasta noodles. Now you could use anything. You could use pine needles, you could use pinto beans, whatever you want. Something that will give you an interesting texture and surface. Now the magic for this project happens with this material. This is casting flux. Casting flux is basically borax. And if you are on a strict budget, you can use a borax powdered soap. Now, you're going to use this by the pinch in the crucible. And actually, the crucible is what they call seasoned with borax before you ever use it. This keeps the metal from sticking to the crucible. Now, what we're going to melt in it is a combination of sterling silver shot, which is, it looks like silver BBs, and we may combine with it some sterling silver scrap material. Now what makes this material melt quickly is a very large surface area, which means a lot of small pieces. So your scrap material might need to be cut with a pair of shears. Any shears that will cut through the material are good enough. So you might even use scissors. Now, you want to have a water supply handy that you could pour into the cans in order to extinguish the flames and to cool the can off. Notice I don't have a pot holder here. Now, to melt the material in the crucible, I'm going to need a torch. Now, if you watch the video that we have on our channel regarding torches, you'll know which one to use. You could use either the acetylene or this torch. The smaller butane torch won't work that well for this. And last but not least, don't forget your safety equipment. You want to protect your eyes and your clothing. You're working with molten metal. And notice, I'm standing up. Never sit down when you work with molten metal. You might get it in your lap, and that wouldn't be a good thing at all. Okay, because this is so smoky, I don't want to do it in the studio here, so we're going to take this outside where there's lots of fresh air and we can get rid of the smoke really easily. So let me grab all these things and I'll meet you outside. Okay, so I've moved outside and now I'm set up and ready to do our direct casting into our dry media. So you can see I've got my sterling silver shot, some sterling silver scrap, casting flux, I have a heat resistant surface on which I have my crucible resting and I have something to boost the handle so that this stays level so the metal doesn't spill out while I'm heating it. And I have a piece of ceramic kiln shelf to cover the cans as they get cast. So I'm going to bring out my dry pasta, my dry chickpeas, these could be beans or any other dry material, and I have a beaker of water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat a large amount of silver in the crucible and I'm going to pour a little bit into each one of these. Now, the water is a great way, if you do it slowly, you can actually kind of make your own casting grain and have it ready for the next casting. But sometimes you get some great shapes out of this. 
So let me heat this up and we'll get ready to, to go. So I'm going to put in my casting grain. And I'm going to put in some smaller pieces of scrap. You can get away with about 50, a 50-50 50 mix. Okay, and I'm going to light the torch and get started. Okay, I don't have too much smoke, and you can see I just put a little bit into each one. You could put more if you want to, but the more you put in, the heavier your piece is going to be. Okay, so I am going to extinguish this with the water, and ooh, I can see I got a really cool water casting. Wow, that's a great one. Take out the extra shot. Okay, and now it's time to put out the fire. Okay, let's move it back into the studio and I'll show you what we got. Okay, we're back in the studio and we're ready for our big reveal of our direct casting projects. But first I want to show you what we got from the water casting. Remember I dropped a little bit of silver into that container of water? And you can see I got some beautiful, very organic looking shapes. And these are fun. You might be able to create some very interesting pieces of jewelry using these water casting pieces. But at a minimum, you've created some smaller pieces that could easily be recycled the next time you cast. Okay, let's see what came out of our containers. So this is the dry chickpeas. And let's see, I've got, looks like I got two or three little pieces here. Okay, so the chickpeas wanted to roll away everywhere. And here's one piece that captured a pea. I'll take that out and put it right there. Here's another one that captured one pea. And I got that. And then this one captured three peas. And this one has a very interesting shape. Let me see if I can pull that pea out. This one all, almost looks like a piece of coral or something. That's pretty exciting right there. So you see you get some very interesting organic shapes that you could either use directly or cannibalize to find interesting parts that you can apply to another project. Okay, let me clean this up a bit. Let's see what we got with our pasta. Now the pasta is a little bit different because instead of having a round shape to it, it has sort of an elongated shape. You might get the same results from the pasta uh, using things like pine needles. Okay, let me dump some of this out. Now remember I wet this, so I have to pull it a little bit because the pasta swells. Ooh, 
There's one really exciting piece. And okay, we've got a couple of little small pieces here. It looks like there may be one more buried in the pasta. Let me grab something to dig it out with. Okay, I think I got them. Let me knock them out. There they are. A couple more smaller pieces. Let's clean this one off and see what, what it really looks like. So the burnt material can be just be scraped out. And once you pickle these things too, you're going to get a better idea of what they really look like. But the fun thing about this one with the pasta is you get these very long stretched out lines on the piece. And like I said, the pine needles would give you something similar, but they would probably give you a, a slightly different texture. And you could use different shapes of pasta as well. Like I said, just be sure that you don't... Um, you pour too much silver at one time because you don't want to create pieces that are too heavy to wear. Alright, that one's kind of interesting right there. That might be something that you could incorporate into a brooch or maybe even to a ring top. These are great. They'll be even prettier once I clean them up. Let me pickle and clean them and I'll be back to show you the end result. Alright, we're back and we've had a chance to clean these up. They've been pickled and cleaned and you can see the spaghetti gave us some really interesting linear effects on the metal. To me it kind of looks like the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz. And our dried chickpeas gave us some results that look very much like coral or some other kind of organic structure. And remember you can always cut these apart and cannibalize just a certain part of them if you want to. Now even our water casting produced some interesting results. Even the smallest one, it's got such a nice little curve to it. And our largest one, it's either fun this way where it's got a lot of dimension or you could turn it over and it's got a really deep recess that you could fill with a pearl or maybe some other type of gem ball. Really interesting pieces. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Have fun making your direct castings and watch our other videos and check out our products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.